Today on Houston Life, from gift cards to $1,000, stay by your phones because it's time for us to spin the Houston Life prize wheel. And you could be our next KPRC2 insider to win big. Then we're catching up with actress Nika King, who's chatting all about the new season of the hit HBO drama series, Euphoria. What she says goes on behind the scenes with co-stars Zendaya and Stormy. Plus, the annual Dr. King speech competition has named their winner. We're going to hear from the student about what it means to take home this prestigious honor. And critically acclaimed singer-songwriter Joshua Radin stops by our studio for a live performance before his show at the Heights Theater. All that happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to Houston Life. It is January 14th. Hard to believe it's already Friday. This is crazy. Hi, Courtney. Hi, everybody. I'm Derek Shore. Glad to have you with us today. And uh, what a beautiful day in H-Town it is. I, it got warm again. It's summer. It did. We had a little snowball fight downtown, <laughs> which we'll explain it later. We're doing a little Olympics thing. Uh, but last night, we also had a little double date night out. We did. We had a double date night out. And I have to tell you, we checked out The Infinite. You saw Lauren Kelly was was there for the preview. There's Brandon, Derek, me, Orlando. This is at Sawyer Yards and it's unbelievable. I didn't know what to expect. It's a VR experience. So, so um, you also got to hear from the astronauts that we're seeing in the VR. You're actually seeing them in the International Space Station and this is what it looks like to walk into the experience. It is kind of difficult to describe just what it is, but if you've never tried virtual reality, you put on these goggles and essentially you only see what is virtual. So there are people all around you. You can see their avatars, but you can't actually see them. Like you probably had no idea. I was shooting video. I had no point. clue you were doing that. So, and then you walk into what just looks like a dark room, but what you're seeing is the International Space Station from the outside, from the inside. And as Courtney explained, they shot this with these 360 degree cameras and it's all in 3D. So you feel like you are just perched atop the space station. You can see Earth right there. Even inside the space station, you're hearing conversations that the astronauts are having with one another. And it's like a front row seat to something you never thought you would be able to do. I can't stress it enough, and Silver Street Studios is just the perfect spot for it. Take your family, take your loved ones, take your friends. It's here till April. You will be Blown away. Blown, Blown away, away is really, I mean, I was speechless at the end. And I have to tell you, just like you were saying, when you walk in, you put these, the, the VR headset on. And I know that there is ground. I am standing on ground. I know I'm not going to float or fall off. But what you see is an edge. So it's sort of your mind playing a trick on you that you you know that you're walking on the ground, but you're seeing this virtual reality of space. And so I ended up shuffling my entire way through because I didn't want to fall. You don't want to fall down. But it was so crazy. But you the won't other fall thing, down. there's all these orbs and then you're you're instructed to push the orb and or touch the orb, I should say. But but there's so many of them that each one of us, all four of us in the group, had a completely different experience. We got done and someone said, did you see the birthday party? And I said, did you see the group hug? And I, none of us saw the same videos. Yeah, I can't, that's why I wanna go back. Me too. Because it'll be, and I'll be less timid as well. Well, uh, check it out, The Infinite at Silver Street Studios. It's fantastic. A lot of our viewers have asked about texts. He's a busy guy. And Listen, some days his social he's here, calendar? Some days he's not. And today he is not for a very good reason, Courtney. That is right. He is at a puppy party oh. with his friend and doggy friend, Waylon, whose birthday is today. And um, I just think this is so cute. Look at those two buds. They're, they are two peas in a pod there. So, of course, Stephanie Bennett is Tex's dog trainer. She has worked wonders with Tex, with your dog, Oscar, as mm -hmm. well. So, uh, little Tex man, we love him. And the fact that he's so well behaved, you know, we owe that all to Stephanie. Oh, for sure. She is the puppy whisperer. That party was happening at Believe in Dog. Yesterday, Oscar was at Believe in Dog and got a little play date, a little nudge of the nose from Tex. Oh, how nice. So they got to hang out and have some bro time. And I think they're taking some puppy naps together right now. I hope so. Which I wish I could do the same Me thing. Me too. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> 
Um, so some updates on our Houston Habitat for Humanity. This is day three of the build. And in case you missed our show earlier this week, was it Monday or Tuesday? I think Tuesday. Tuesday. When we started constructing the walls for what would become a future home for a well-deserved family. And we always talk about this. This is our ninth build for KPRC to do this in, in our parking lot. Um, but there are so many other volunteers and this home is just not given. I mean, you have sweat equity, you earn this home and there's so many volunteers that are part of this. What a beautiful day to be out on the site here of Northeast Houston. It really is perfect. And it's also just so satisfying to see this home coming together. I believe we have some sound um, from one of the workers. So why don't we roll that? It shows a sense of pride, a sense of um, for us also to help people in need that they can say I'm building my house. And we have heard stories from so many homeowners when they're so happy they can come out and build their house and then when they walk in they know all the sweat and tears also they put into this where they can accomplish their goal and we can help a family in need a hands up as we do it in Houston Habitat. Uh, hands up. I mean, that doesn't explain the story, right? I mean, that is so true. Houston Habitat for Humanity, so many great things. What a great day to be out building the home. Um, in addition to our title sponsor, UT Health Houston, there's other corporate sponsors as well for this year in 2022. Veritex Community Bank, Reliant, Shipley Donuts, all of these partnerships. Would, this wouldn't happen without all of them. And of course, the scores of volunteers that will put this house together. It really does take a village. It takes volunteers. It takes the sponsors, the Habitat folks. So uh, bravo, bravo. Can't wait to see this house continue to go up. I know. And we had the homeowner, surprised the homeowner who was there building on site as well a couple days ago and got the word that that was actually his house. So it was really cool to watch that. But you can check that out on clicktohouston.com. And we talk about, of course, this is the building season for Houston Habitat for Humanity. It's also about to be Girl Scout season, y'all. Already? Get your order cards ready. That's Wait good news. for that knock on the door from the girls. No, no, listen. We live in the world of convenience, right? We want things delivered from our groceries and meals and all these other things. Hello. Now you can get those boxes. Just a push of a button on your phone thanks to DoorDash. You're kidding. No, I am not. And, but where do they come from? From the local Girl Scout troop? Yeah, so this is so cool because there's an availability. You have to search and see if it's available there on the DoorDash app. Um, but starting February 18th, you can enter your zip code into the Girl Scout cookie finder to order your boxes as well. Okay, that's pretty cool. But I'm still a fan of ordering from like coworkers, children, right? You, they're they're you still gonna what? have the old fashioned order form, right? Yeah, I, I'm a fan of the, of the pitch. I, I want the sales pitch. I wanna hear the whole pitch, the I whole do. thing. That I is do. super, super cool. This year's new cookie, though, is the Adventure Fools. It's described as an indulgent brownie inspired cookie with caramel flavored cream wow. and a hint of sea salt. Okay, that looks good. I like I, the slow mo video. The Thin Mint, still, though, my for fave. Me, my fave takes the cake. I know. A so yummy. Boxes. Takes the cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here all scout week. cookies, not cakes. <laughs> that was a great dad joke, mama. Okay, still to come from self-checkout to robots making food, the future of automation. Courtney, you won't believe this. Hear how one man took it to the next level. Okay, all right, let's check in with Joe, who is hanging out at HISD for a special competition. This is a good one, Joe. It really is, Courtney and Derek. So MLK Day weekend is going to be kicking off. We're kicking it off today, which took place earlier this morning with a huge competition that included fourth and fifth graders from all over the Houston area. I'm going to tell you more about that competition and what the prize was that they got after they won. Of course, that's coming up after a quick break when Houston Life returns. Okay, this is like when I feel really inadequate when it comes to my computer and stuff. You know me, I'm always calling you. She has trouble IT. just turning it on. <laughs> but that's okay, Johnny, a lot of people do. Yeah, I've got issues, but I mean, that's just one of them. But listen to this, this IT worker, this guy's my hero. Check this out. He went viral, actually his story did, after he automated his own job. Like the job just does itself in the yes, background? Yes, he's an IT employee. He's working from home during the pandemic. And now he says his work days are spent playing video games because he automated his entire job. 
So what are people saying on the interwebs about well, listen, this? I mean, people must be applauding him, right? Other people are saying, oh, he's just lazy? I mean, I think it's 50-50. It's a little split here. But it's been more than a year because he did this, of course, during the pandemic and says that nobody in the company knows. Oh. He anonymously posted this and was like, hey, I'm getting away with it because I know how to do this. But my job is being done because it's automated. And I'm over here just, you know. Eating bonbons. And how much is he making and just, during this job? You know, piecing out ninety thousand oh, dollars a year. Not bad. Yeah. Full article there on board Panda. I know so many people are like, mm. How can I do this? <laughs> My wheels are turning too. Can I just oh. ghost out? Does that happen? Do we just automate here? Does that happen? I mean I don't think so. I think if you left work, people might notice. <laughs> I think if you left, if Lauren left, if we all left, there would be a situation. People would notice if we weren't here, right? Well, good for him. I mean, if at the end of the day, the work is still getting done. It's still done. It's still done. And so, he made bravo. that happen, right? Okay. Lauren Kelly's here. And Lauren, I know you have an opinion on this, and I think you also <laughs> yeah. have our question of the day. You know, that is working smarter, not harder. And if you guys want to just put my laugh track on record and repeat, <laughs> Harris Bueller's day off. Out. Just leave. Just leave the office, Lauren. We want to hear from you guys, though. If you could automate one thing in your life, what would it be and why? Of course, we've got some great answers already coming in. Let's start with Grace. Grace writes in and says, oh, the laundry, yes. please. Uh -huh. Amen. Either the cleanest or the dirtiest people in the world. I kind of finish it, but I don't fold it. So it's never. Oh, while, I can right? throw it in. <laughs> I just yeah. don't want to do anything else. <laughs> All right, Amy says, getting ready. Think Jetson style. Oh, with the buttons and the mirror and things like that. That's right. Go through a human car wash, robot toothbrush, yes. auto clothes, Love ballet, it. makeup and hair. The whole process is done for you. Amen, I Amy. Like it. I Amen. Love it. Copyrighted, I'll sign on. And Michael says, <gasps> my wife, she does nothing. Uh, oh, oh, Michael. Michael, you're going to be in big She's trouble. She's going to be doing something tonight. <laughs> oh, I think I just heard a slap. Yeah. <laughs> Pushing you right out the door, bro. <laughs> Head over to the Houston Life Facebook page and join in our conversation. We will share more of your comments a little bit later on. But, you know, you guys, it's not a bad idea. As long as nobody knows, right? They always know. They, they always do. Know. Everybody they knows. Always yeah, know. they find Ghosting, just, it just happens. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> just happens. I don't know how. Thank you, Lauren. Sure. And thanks to our viewers. Those are some good comments. Michael, we were just kidding, by the way. <laughs> okay, shifting gears now. Of course, Monday is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and there's a special speech competition that prompts students to ask themselves, how would Dr. King assess our progress in achieving his vision for America? And this is the 26th annual MLK Jr. Oratory competition. It kicked off today in HISD. Joe Sam was there to capture all of this action. What a great day to be there, Joe. It really was, Courtney and Derek. So I came here this morning around 10 o'clock when the competition kicked off. There's going to be several events happening all around the city to kick off this weekend of celebration for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Commemorating with that Monday, which is going to have the huge parade and festival happening in Midtown. That's going to be amazing. But what was even more special was that competition that kicked off today with all of those students. We are talking right now to the moderator and host who's also working with the law firm that was putting this on Foley and Lardner. This was absolutely amazing in the 26th year, and these kids were so special, they blew me away, right? They have amazing talent. They are what make the event what it is. They're just unbelievable. So talk a little bit more about the importance of the event and why do you continue to put this on every single year? Well, we do the event to remember Dr. King. As you said, it's the MLK holiday, and so what better way to do that, to, to commemorate his legacy, than to get our kids involved and mm -hmm. to get them thinking about Dr. King, studying about him, and then writing and delivering a speech about him. It's a great way to stay connected. It absolutely is. So take a look at what we captured from this morning from the actual event. Event. All of those students were giving some powerful speeches, fourth and fifth graders. Talk about how many students actually participated in this competition. Well, overall, going through all of the 24 schools who participated, it would have been hundreds. Mm. And then today, we had narrowed that down to the 12 finalists who were here today. And they were very, very competitive with each other. I'm glad I wasn't one of the judges. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say the judges would have had a very hard time. And let's talk about the style, too, because these kids were stylish. I mean, they came dressed to the nine because they were all competing 
competing for a grand prize. What is that prize that they were going to get for the winner? Well, the first place winner gets $1,000, but everybody who was a finalist today gets $100. Wow. So for competing as well as they did and making as, as far through the competition, they all get a reward, which they deserve. They deserve to be recognized. Claude, thanks so much for all of that information, and thanks for doing this every single year. The law firm is doing some amazing work. This competition was definitely one of them. When we come back, you guys, we're going to be speaking to the winner of the competition to see just how amazing they feel after competing in such an intense competition because these kids were incredible. You're going to also hear a little bit of their speech to Courtney and Derek. Absolutely breathtaking. Okay. All right, Joe. We can't wait to meet him. All right. When we come back, more advancements in the mental health field. A local psychiatrist breaks down the importance of this new technology. And later, his music has been on the soundtrack of many of your favorite shows. We're chatting with singer-songwriter Joshua Radin ahead of his Houston concert tonight. All that and more when Houston Life returns. Welcome back. Mental health is a serious issue for many Americans, and the COVID-19 pandemic has presented new challenges to navigate. Joining us now is Houston-based psychiatrist Dr. Frank Chen, who's here with more on the digital tools that can be used to, uh, to help people living with mental health conditions. Dr. Chen, welcome to the show. Hey, Derek. This is really interesting. Before we get into the technology, we talk about mental health issues here in the United States. Just how many people are affected by some sort of mental health condition? Well, you know, millions of people have suffered from treatable mental health conditions. And the numbers that's given by the National Institute of Mental Health in 2019 is that uh, nearly one in five uh, adults have been diagnosed with some sort of mental health condition. And so that's, that's a staggering number. But I, I got to tell you, you know, people are more transparent about this, and we have help out there. And when you say people are more transparent about this, do you believe that the stigma of mental health, do you think that that is going away? Because it seems like during the pandemic, uh, we've heard a lot more publicly uh, things are being spoken about when it comes to mental health. Yeah, I, I think that people are more receptive to treatment. And, you know, we all have a family member or a friend who's been receiving treatment, and that makes it, um, it normalizes things for people. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Absolutely. It's not It's not to be used as an insult, right? I'm glad we're finally having these conversations. Okay, so technology. There are certain tools, digital tools, specifically apps, that are now being used in the mental health feel to help people living with some sort of condition. So explain to us how this works. So Derek, as a physician, um, you, you know, the way in which I make medical decisions is only as good as the information that I receive. And so I, I try to ask a series of questions of my patients. They try to paint this picture for me. Um, and sometimes they have difficulties remembering critical events in between appointments. And so digital medicine comes in because it allows the capturing, the recording, and then subsequently the sharing of that information with me so that we can have a more fruitful conversation. Interesting. You know, that's a very good point because in between the times when you're seeing patients, whether it's once a week or once a month, there's a lot of stuff that happens between that time. So you're saying these apps can help document things that happen during that time. Sure. Okay, let's talk about, um, in your opinion, will we see, it, is there going to be a shift? Like, are we going to see more and more digital tools being used to help people with mental health conditions? Well, I can only speak for my practice, but I think that um, the, there's, there's certainly value additivity for uh, the patients who choose to use some, uh, one of these mental health tools. Um, it allows them to be much more empowered. Uh, they um, are interactive with the app. They have feedback, and they can call me if you know they're not. It, things are not going the right direction. Before the the digital world, what were your what were your patients doing? Were they journaling? Were they keeping notes in a book, or well, what did you advise them? Well, you know, they, they journal, but it's hard to read this journal um, that you know that may have pages in a fifteen minute appointment. And so we really have to condense that down. And with some of the digital tools, we we see very clear lines that are drawn in terms in terms of symptoms, um, and and that helps us. 
And we can see this list on the screen. I mean, this goes far beyond journaling and writing down what you did and what you're feeling and what you're thinking at the time. I mean, this is really giving a more complete health picture for you as a psychiatrist when your patients come in. It gives you a bigger picture to look at. Sure, these are very common questions for me that, that's being recorded uh, and, and shared. Dr. Chen, final thoughts on uh, where we are in the world. And I think it's very interesting that people are having these conversations and the stigma seems to be lessening. Sure. Um, I think that it is interesting uh, that we have adapted to a lot of technology over the course of the last two years in medicine. And that the next wave, maybe, um, you know, the utilization of these technology in, in our, our wellness. And so if you, um, and certainly I, I think that patients uh, uh, have to discuss with their uh, providers about if these digital tools are the right tools for them but if they want to explore more they can go to uh, mentalhealthdigitaltool.com and see what um, what this is all about okay fantastic dr. Frank Chen thanks so much for stopping by thanks for Thank your you. time and again for more information on these tools you can visit mentalhealthdigitaltool.com you can also find a link on our website houstonlife.tv now let's check in with Lauren Kelly who chatted with one of the stars of a hit HBO series this is cool Lauren this is really cool Derek coming up actress Nika King is breaking down season two of HBO's Emmy award-winning drama series Euphoria including which social media app co-star Zendaya is not helping her out with plus we'll get a check of what is coming up for the new at four, including last minute info about the Chevron Houston Marathon happening this weekend. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Happy Friday. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you just about 3.30. On this beautiful, oh, beautiful. It's lovely. I think Frank would call it Chamber of Commerce weather. Oh, for sure. We're just about there, right? Well, what do you say we get more of what you are saying about today's question of the day? We asked, if you could automate one thing in your life, what would it be and why? Debbie writes in, weeding the flower beds. I love having beautiful plants and flowers, but hate all the weeds. It's a lot of time and effort, it for really sure. Is. It's a lot of work. Lori writes in, grocery list making and shopping would love that. That's a big deal. You know what? Grocery delivery and pickup makes it like when you can do the digital shopping mm -hmm. and just pick up in the parking lot. That's a game changer. Jody writes in cooking. I've been cooking for 50 years. Give me a break, please. You know, cooking is is a chore for it sure. Is. Some people love it though. Jane writes in. I want to be Samantha from Bewitched. Blink and bam, whatever you want. Yes. L O L. We talked about that the other day. We did. She just sort of would like wrinkle her nose, right? Right. Or wriggle her nose, whatever the word is. I don't know what it is, but yeah. that would be fun trait to have. I just want someone good. to blow dry my hair every time. Oh. That's it. Well, I could blow dry your hair for you. Okay. That would be great. I'm a giver. I, you are. You're such a giver. Let's okay. check in. It's very <laughs> awkward around here all of a sudden. <laughs> Feeling warm. <laughs> Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look what they have coming up. Blowout action? No problem. <laughs> Show up to work with wet hair. Up. I'm going to set up a station. Perfect. Keith will be really quick. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Yes, yeah, you know, you know I'd, be your, I'd be your easiest customer, best tip too. There. Sorry, Keith, that, you, you, you gotta do your own. <laughs> oh yeah, man, don't leave, leave me out, don't leave me out. It's too much of a commitment. And I think it's, I think it's wiggle her nose. So I was a big wiggle. Fan and yeah. I, I could have just said wiggle, yeah. yeah. Or move it. Yeah. But Darren would say like, do that thing with your nose. I mean, they never really kind of named it, did they? I think yeah, it's a say, do that, I say, Samantha, do that thing with your nose, just this one time. Yeah, like that, yeah. She was, and she really did it. It wasn't a trick. I know, that oh, sounds no, yeah. is vaguely she, familiar. She really did it? It <laughs> really wasn't like it. a, oh. No, she, no, oh, she was really a witch in real life, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that? <laughs> oh, she, okay, we need to talk after the show. Oh, Derek, man, that was Now you're letting real. him in on all the secrets. Oh, Calling Dr. Man, Bombay. You, Calling ah, Dr. Bombay. Spoiler alert. No, okay, I'm sorry, Derek. We'll I was just, uh, <laughs> hey, speaking of blow dry, I've got a wind, an unbelievable, i got to show you something. You're going to... Uh, it's, keep your mics on there, Derek. Take it away. Okay. See this. First of all, look at this. I got clear skies, as you guys mentioned. And it's 75, 77. It's going to be a really nice evening. There's no question about it. So we'll see temperatures going right down into the uh, 60s. So 66 at 6, 64. Oh. That's Breck. Breck. So Breck yeah. needs a blowout. Oh, <laughs> but nice Breck's gosh. hair is so cute. It's that doodle. Breck it's is the doodle. at the dry bar. Yeah. Okay, look at this. Okay, here's our front. It's 59 in Amarillo, 80 in San Angelo, oh. 75 here. Look at the winds. 37 in Amarillo, 29 in Lubbock, 
22 in Dallas. Look at the wind gusts. 63 mile an hour oh, wind wow. gust in Amarillo reported right now. How about that? Okay. Man, okay. I know, that's crazy. 40 in Lubbock, that's tropical storm force, and that's a strong tropical storm force. So what does it mean to us? It means that this front gets here tomorrow morning. This is 9 o'clock tonight. As we go into tomorrow, you can see at 6 a.m., we're still in the 50s. We get into the evening or the afternoon hours, and we're in the 40s. So we drop all day long as far as temperatures, and it is going to be windy. 6 a.m., 22, 23, 25 mile an hour winds, and they continue in the 20s to about 30 all day long. This is 2 p.m. Continue right on through the afternoon into the evening. This is 6, starting to come down, and this doesn't even have the gusts. We're going to show you the gusts. I'll show you those at 4 o'clock, and those, you can almost double that, but I think there's some good news for the marathoners. The winds still stout north 10 to 15, but they were 15 or even a little higher, so they're going to come down a little bit, but it's still going to be breezy, and it's going to be cold on Sunday, 35, 42, 50, and 52. I'll have your full forecast, but the wind, more than anything, we'll look at the rain too, but it's the wind, the wind, the wind. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good when it's at your back. And right? You yeah. know, not like a wall in the front, but hey. <laughs> good luck. They're going to be doing it. They're running it. Yeah. They're running it. Okay. Thanks, Frank. We'll talk to you in just a bit. Uh, look now what some of the stories we're working on for our newscast at four. Final preparations underway for the Chevron Houston Marathon this weekend. We are walking you through what runners and anyone who plans to be in the area needs to know ahead of race time. Yeah, going to be a big weekend out there. And with hospitals overrun, people who can recover from the flu or COVID at home are being encouraged to do so. Houston's only TV health reporter Haley Hernandez will walk us through four major steps doctors want warn you not to skip while you're trying to feel better. And he's no cat, but one family pet in Washington state seems to have nine lives just the same. How he survived nearly a week inside the family's collapsed house after a landslide and the happy reunion with his family. You always love those survival stories. Wow. Wow. Oh word. Yeah, glad he's okay. All right, guys, we'll see you at 4 o'clock. Yeah. Happy H weekend. You too. you too. TGIF. HBO's hit show Euphoria takes place in a town of East Highland where 17-year-old Rue must find hope while balancing the pressures of love, loss, and addiction. People love this series. Lauren Kelly chatted with actress Nika King, who stars as family matriarch Leslie Bennett on the award-winning series. Hey, Lauren. And if you have not gotten into this, you need to do so. As Leslie Bennett, Nika King takes on the role of a widow and a mother to daughters Rue, played by by Zendaya and Gia, played by Storm Reed, as they navigate life's adventures, challenges, and uncertainties. The series just returned for an eight episode second season, and Nika is giving fans a peek at what we can expect from the award winning drama. It is not easy, but I'm very proud of each and every one of you for trying to take this on because it's no future in addiction. The season two is out now. It streams on Sundays on HBO. For viewers that have not seen season one, can you give us a little bit of a of a recap, just kind of a summary of what the show's about? And it's basically about a teenager who's addicted to drugs and going through all the drama um, surrounding her addiction. And it's about uh, anxiety and depression and bullying and shaming, all of the things that the young people are dealing with right now in society. Why don't you catch us up to where season two picks up? Woo, okay, so if you have not been watching Euphoria, I, I need you to catch up. You have until Sunday. We're gonna Sunday. shake our fingers. We're gonna shake our fingers. <laughs> so season two is basically a continuation of Rue's addiction. Um, we know from season one, spoiler alert, that she had an overdose. And now we continue down this path of, is she going to get clean? Is she going to stay on drugs? Is she going to keep kind of going down this road that's possibly going to lead to her demise? Emmy Award winning, the acting is just incredible. You mentioned Storm Reid, of course, Zendaya, who's like this amazing superstar also. Like, do, does everybody in the cast get along and just kind of work together daily? We're like a big family. Most of my scenes for season one was with Z and Stormy. And then season two, I got a chance to um, be in scenes with other characters. And so it's like every time we're on set, we're always laughing, we're always joking. And of course, the content is very, you know, it's, it's intense. It's so deep. we have to find, yes, it's yeah. very deep. So we have to find ways to, you know, stay. Uh, fun and light, but yeah, everyone gets along pretty well, and everyone, it's just like a family. It is. I, I, I bet you guys have, like, 
the mom argues, the sisters really argue in real life, you know, oh, yeah. you just kind of have to keep it right there. <laughs> oh yeah, and I'm always like asking them to do TikToks with me and they're looking at me like, no, we don't do TikToks with... Well, if you know how to do it, age show group. me. Because <laughs> I don't know how to use TikTok. <laughs> Neither do I. That's why I always, Stormy, I always say, come on, show, come on, let's do this. When she was like, no, that's not. No, that's not no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, season two, Euphoria on HBO, now streaming each Sunday. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for happy, having me. Happy New Year and best of luck. Peace and blessings. Bye. Oh, she's so gorgeous. The show is a must watch. The whole cast is incredible and you will be instantly hooked. For more of my interview with Nika, just log on to HoustonLife.tv. But Derek and Courtney don't think she's all serious business. She's actually a comedian and she's going on tour later this year, hoping to get Houston on that calendar. She's hoping to get oh Houston on there. Yes. That is crossed. crazy. Yes. I love that. Well, yes. also, I have to admit something. I didn't hear a word she said because she is so beautiful. She's gorgeous. She's I like mean, distracting to look at. Yes, I know. Gorgeous. Ever gorgeous and super intense tense mm -hmm. that that looks like absolutely that role is a hard one for sure check it out all yeah. right lauren thanks always have a good golden nugget oh, at the end little no, just a little nugget. <laughs> <laughs> all right coming up on houston life it is time for us to spin for you maybe to win one lucky kprc2 insider we'll have the chance to win one thousand dollars and of course some other great prizes courtney and now let's check in with joe sam who is kicking off mlk weekend for a celebration and this is so great this is an annual competition happening throughout HISD where some young students get involved. Hi Joe. Hey guys, that's right. So a lot of students were involved earlier in the competition today and they announced the winner. We're going to be speaking to the winner of this competition and learn a little bit more about why he decided to take part in this amazing MLK Day competition. When Houston Life returns, don't go anywhere. Fridays here at Houston Life because Courtney, you know what that means. We I get to have a costume change. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's like mini Halloween. No, it means it's time for our Houston Life prize wheel. In case you're new to this drill, we spin for a lucky KPRC2 insider to win pretty cool prizes. It is your chance to cash in $1,000, Landry's gift cards, and a whole lot more, Courtney. And this is so fun. We do this every Friday, and today we're spinning for Gina Keen, who's joining us live via Zoom from the Timber Grove area. Welcome, Gina. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, we want to know a little bit about you. We know you're a busy mom of three. Um, talk to us because it's Rachel, TJ, and Danny are your kids. Yes. Yes, they are. Rachel and TJ are college age or graduated already. Danny is 16, a junior at Walter High School. And which one is your favorite? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, I hear you also It would have... be Danny, of course, no. <laughs> so tell us about uh, your grandchild. Is that her right there on the screen, Lily? She's six years old? She's six years old. Oh, what a yeah. sweetheart. It looks like she's a Stros fan. I know. As the rest of your family, we know that baseball is big for you guys. Um, your son plays on the Waltrip High School team as well as the Angels travel team. So you spend some time there on the field, huh? Yes, actually both my kids played at Timber Grove Sports Association and grew up through that system and now Danny's playing the high school. So that, that is great. Is awesome. I do love the W for Wall Trip on your shirt and we've also been through the TSA Association. It's a great place. So is there anything on the prize wheel that maybe Jeannie you got your eye on today? Uh, Money is always good. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Okay, well, Courtney, do you want to do the honors? It's you, I think. Okay, I'm going to go first. Lucky left hand. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Let's go, Let's Gina. Let's go for it. Okay, this is where the tension happens. It looks like you have won a pack of Landry's gift cards. Congratulations, Gina, for a night out with the family. Thank you. We can always you use that. You are so welcome. Our producers are going to be in touch with you very shortly and how you can claim those prizes. And thanks so much for tuning in today. We appreciate it and being an insider. Thank you. Have a great weekend. If you want your chance to spin and win live on the show, all you have to do is join that KPRC2 Insider program. Totally free to join. Just head to click to Houston.com slash insider if you would like to sign up. Now we're going to send things out to Joe Sam, who's hanging out at HISD with a very special speech competition. Hey, Joe. 
Hey guys, so a little bit earlier, I told you that we were going to be introducing you to the winner of this amazing MLK Junior Oratory Speech Competition that took place earlier this morning at 10 o'clock. It was absolutely amazing. Even more amazing is the winner that we have with us right now, Mr. Ronnie Williams. This is amazing because you've done such an incredible job. How did it feel winning this competition? It felt great. It felt really great. And you said that you had to prepare for how long to get ready for this competition today? Three long months. Oh, so talk about the preparation because that's a long time. You said you memorized things paragraph by paragraph because your speech was about six minutes long, correct? Yes. Oh, wow. And then so, so basically, I had to, I didn't, so I didn't know the words that I did not know. Mm -hmm. I had to look up then paraphrase, explain, and use in a sentence. Wow, absolutely amazing. You know, we have a little bit of your speech, and I want everyone at home to hear a little bit of that. Now, let's take a listen to how he performed a little earlier today during the competition. There has been a lot of dedicated individuals over the years that has helped America reach her goal of justice for all. He would be proud to see how far we have come and encourage us to work harder when he compares how it started, how it's going. His assessment will read, progress, not perfection. There you go. You just heard that amazing portion of his speech. It was longer than that. Absolutely incredible. Just telling how Dr. King would assess the progress that we've made thus far if he was still alive. So we want to say congratulations to you. Tell everyone what you want to be when you grow up. I want to be a commentator or a journalist when I grow up. There we go. So you're in the right field. We're going to become real good friends. Give me a good handshake on that and congratulations again. Courtney Derrick, we got a whiz kid on us right here. Absolutely amazing. I'm glad we were able to share that too. Congratulations. Thanks, Joe. Very nice. When we come back, get ready for a great treat, y'all. Renowned singer songwriter Joshua Radin is in our studio for a live performance fresh off his release of his new album. There he is along with his buddy Danny on guitar. We're going to chat with them when Houston Life returns right after this. Welcome back. You know, his songs, you've heard them on shows like Scrubs, Grey's Anatomy, or Parenthood, and he's gained a loyal following thanks to his mix of folk and acoustic music and personal lyrics, sex like story time. We're talking about singer-songwriter Joshua Radin, whose tour stops in Houston tonight. He joins us with all the details. Welcome to Houston Life. It's great to see you. Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks we for having us. We appreciate you making time. I know you oh, just started the tour. Ours. Uh, last night, we got Danny back there as yeah. well. Started the tour last night in Dallas, so we love that you're at Heights Theater. We're going to have more on the tour. But let me just do a little bit of bragging. You ready to hear this? Okay. So more than a billion streams, more than a million records sold. Um, I mean, y y you're you're just, you're big. You're big. Why do you think people love you so much? I'm not. But, don't you uh, love that question? But, but that's very sweet of you to say. Um, I don't know. My mom streams my songs a lot. <laughs> um, Thanks, Mom. No, I think it's your personality, right? It's the story time. I think that's why people kind of are attracted to that music. They want to hear more, you know? They like listening well, to the story. It is personal. It's like, you know, opening up my diary for people. Yeah. Um, and I make myself as vulnerable as I possibly can. So I think maybe people see a bit of themselves in every song I write. It's so great. I, I'm a huge fan. Thank also self-taught. Yep. On the guitar. Yeah, way late in life. I didn't start till I was 30. So was it something that you always wanted to do and you kind yeah, of Yeah, I was just scared. Away? I just never thought I'd be able to do it. And I guess turning 30 was like this, whoa, maybe I should try this, you know, like bucket list kind of thing. Not, well, that, not that you need a bucket list at 30, but um, but in that, in that vein, you know? Yeah. And I just figured, and then like six months later, I was writing songs and I just never looked back. I love it so much. I'm so fortunate that people come see us play and... It's just been such a horrible time for the world in the last two years, and it's just, I just want to make people smile again. It's well, you're doing it. We've got the show tonight. We're going to bring up the event details. This is what's happening at the Heights Theater. Doors open at 7 p.m. Tickets, tickets start at 26 bucks. It's one of the best places, small venue in town, to check out the show. More information on HoustonLife.tv. And now performing the song off its album, The Ghost in the Wall, a plan acclaimed by Danny Black on guitar. Here's Joshua Radin with Hey you. Thank you. Hey you, where are you going? 
Cause I need a ride Way out of here Another bridge One more fire Only a week But it seemed like a year I know I'll never come back Follow the sun as it's heading west Hide away from the rest of the world Just go Come on faster such a great week here at the we show. Sure did. So much fun. I can't believe all the things that we actually did. So why don't we take a quick look back? That's right. From welcoming back a familiar face to KPRC2 to chatting with a young star and laughing with a Hollywood comedian. Here's a look back at all the fun we had this week. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life on this Monday, January 10th. They have great Please. conversations. Courtney tells me about that all the time. We do. You shout out to all your pecan grove peeps. Uh, you know, this is such a great day here at the station. This is the Gatsby beverage. This is the Gatsby cocktail. So absolutely, Jerry. all of these items were absolutely cheers fabulous. You. Uh, you know, cheers Good about this. Hey, so um, the control room. Oh. Oh, what's Chris looking for? Oh, his wine? The Sorry, service Chris. cart will be in in just a moment. We can have a mommy day out. That's Uncle what we want Derek to know. Uncle Derek is, is here for, for duty. We're looking for material right? constantly. <laughs> All we want to do is entertain people, but we run out of ideas. Whoever smelt it, dealt it. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't understand. I don't either, Michael. So okay. we'll pull the heels in towards okay. the glutes there. And oh, then you God! <laughs> And you just start to lift up and crunch your knees in. Thank you, everybody. That was amazing. So it's, it's a good thing she strapped into that thing so she doesn't drop. I was it. waiting for you to be like, thank you, Houston. Good night. <laughs> Thank you, Houston. You know how many people I heard from viewers talking about what a great job Lauren did on she, that accordion? And that is not easy. It's not easy. And both hands are doing something. Just and she's talking. It's like, I don't even understand. <laughs> yeah, it's like a miracle. Well, uh, yeah, that was a nice look back. It was a nice look back. And a big thank you to Joshua Raiden. A reminder that his concert is tonight at the Heights Theater. If you haven't been there, it's such an intimate setting right on 19th Street. Historic Heights Theater. And uh, there's ticket information there on the screen. And the great thing about the location there for the Heights Theater is you could really make a great Friday night date night out of it. I mean, Absolutely. So many great places.
choices to grab a bite or to grab a drink before or after the show. So check it out and uh, have a great time. Absolutely. Okay, coming up Monday on Houston Life, we are honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his legacy. And we'll be catching up with Lauren Anderson. She is, of course, an icon. You know, she was the first African-American principal ballerina here in Houston. Plus, we're sitting down with pastors Rudy and Juanita Rasmus. We're so excited about this. They're breaking down why Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream is as important today as it was 58 years ago during the March on Washington. Can't wait for our conversation with them. Absolutely still relevant today. Well, thanks to all of you for joining us this week on Houston Life, and thanks to our viewers who left their comments responding to our question of the day on Facebook. We always love hearing from you. It's so great, and good luck to all the half and full marathon runners this weekend. It's going to be a tough race with the wind. We're pulling for you. Just visualize that finish line. We'll be out there cheering them on. Absolutely. All right, that does it for our show today. Let's hand it off to Keith and Christine in Studio A. Hey, it's Friday. We yes, made it. We did. Happy weekend. Yes, enjoy your weekend, guys. We'll see you on Monday. All right. Yeah, yeah.